Let's talk about SmackDown. Yeah. The, the the biggest thing, and and I've been thinking it for a while in the back of my head, but it's like we really need a new Mean Gene, or a new or a new or just bring her back, Renee Young, that interview person that's credible, personable that we like, because it struck me with uh, Bianca Belair's promo, and I've always thought it with the John Cena promo, the now Drew um, Drew McIntyre does it. When the person has to come out and explain and narrate the show, uh, Drew does a lot of things. Well, what about that pay-per-view? What a bunch of great action. He talks about undercard matches. And, and Bianca is a new star they're building. And for her to have to come out and explain her story and explain, the, well, I could challenge this person because they have this. And it's like, why is a star hosting the show and giving us backstory and giving us information. It's like, that's what nee, nee, Mean Gene needs to do, or Renee Young, or someone like that, that they allow to be charismatic enough that they can hold our attention for the five minutes of giving us the story, rather than the the more robotic interviewers, shall we say, that I just want the star to give me the emotion, give me their direct views, not explain all the story and they're making Bianca star and I really do like her her new direction as her character the the Bianca that I saw in NXT and when they first brought her up she was a great heel in my opinion but she just came off so cocky and so arrogant and so full of herself I'm just like this isn't a baby face now they've tweaked that now and I think they're doing well with it but those promos where they have to talk too much. And then when Sasha come out and she has to sing the praises of this person and that person. And I'm like, stars don't do that. And it really reminded me um, when you and Vinny were, you know, reviewing the old NWA shows, you'd almost joke that every guy on the show would come out and put over the Dusty Rhodes angle and put over how amazing this Dusty Rhodes angle was. And it's like, yeah, because Dusty was the star. And when Bianca comes out or John Cena comes out or Drew, Drew McIntyre comes out and they have to talk about the undercard matches to them, I'm like, Dusty wouldn't come out and put over the uh, the Shaska Watley angle. It's like Dusty's going to get himself over and other people are going to talk about Dusty. And I think if they had that mean gene pitch man, the Renee Young, because Renee was really good, I found, as the interviewer role. I didn't think the commentary role suited her as well, but as an interview person, she was awesome. I'd like to see that again so that the stars can just give us their personality. And so many of the really, you know, big stars they had, like Hulk Hogan, I don't think he, I don't know if he could, but like, I don't think he should, you know, do that 12-minute talking segment. Hogan was always best when he could just do his, I hung it and bung on the Titanic for 40 days and 40 nights. And it's like, it would be like a minute and a half of complete insanity rambling, but it's like there was intensity, there was charisma, there was Hulk Hogan. And I think we need more of that. We need stars. And I think having a mean gene slash Renee Young would really help the shows out. You know, I, I was watching this thing on youtube the other day it was it was christian and randy orton and miz all talking about the history of the intercontinental title it actually was really good and the like a table for three thing yeah okay yeah and the host of this was kathy kelly okay and by the way, I was actually looking up the list of WWE interview women because I knew her face, but I, for the life of me, couldn't remember her name. Because if you watch the shows, they were all so absolutely interchangeable, which I've mentioned by a million design, times. By design, not them. Yeah, but the funny design. thing is, like, they hire actual talented women with resumes, <laughs> and they have them do a job that literally any model could do with zero experience. Like, you could find a really attractive woman who dropped out of school in the eighth grade, and, like, as long as she could read, she could do the job of these other women. It's like, well, what do you... Why do you hire these women? But the point of this is... So Kathy Kelly is hosting, and I was fucking blown away. 
She was awesome. She was fucking unbelievable on this thing. And she's talking history. Like off the top of her head, she's running down these things. And Miz, you won this belt and you beat this guy on Raw 1000. And like the wrestlers are fucking, they have no idea. Like Miz goes, <laughs> actually it was Miz. He goes, yeah, you know, I beat Christian uh, for the Intercontinental title. I, I think it was like Raw 500. And boom, she goes, no, it was Raw 1000. And she was right. And I was just, I was so impressed. The The show was actually really good, but I just yeah, watched the, it. The stuff on the network that f very few people see are usually quite awesome. Well, yes. But, I mean, I was just watching and I was going, fuck. Like, I know, I mean, the worst, the absolute, I know everyone always talks about Dasha, okay? But she's long gone. The worst by far is Charlie Caruso. I mean, it's literally a gimmick that they give her not only a question that anybody could ask, but on top of that, it's a stupid question. And it's like, there's no reason for her to be there except that she's also good looking. But there, there, she never asks any question that adds anything to the show. Her presence, the questions, the line of questions, it never adds anything to the show. And if they just let her do her job, and then if they just let the wrestlers do their jobs... Instead of having to do the job that she's not allowed to do, the show would be so much better. I don't think it's ever going to happen. The constant reference to, you know, everybody having to talk about their record and how many titles Sasha has won and this person's been champion for this many days. I mean, the only thing that I can figure in that instance is that they believe that because of the state of wrestling right now, they've got to give information that makes the current viewers think that they're watching during a really great period. There's all these record-breaking reigns and record-breaking this. And the funny thing is, to the real hardcore WWE fans, I mean, a decade from now, they probably are going to look back and look at this as like a glory period. As fucking crazy as that sounds, <laughs> I honestly believe it. Because the other thing, I won't take up too much of your time, Lance, but as I was watching this this thing on the Intercontinental title, it like auto-played into this other video... And it's this bro who's, like, reviewing one of these replica belts from WWE Shop. And it was the Intercontinental belt that you held. The, the one that looks like a penny. Okay? <laughs> so this fucking guy is, like, going over this belt and the history of all of these former Intercontinental belts. And I swear to God, he goes, you know, everybody, most people really love the, the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect version of the Intercontinental title. But to me... This was the greatest Intercontinental Champion design of all time. I was like, what? It was made by the machine at the Space Needle where it Exactly. The they like twist the thing. You put the fucking penny in there. But the point was, he was a guy who when he was a kid, yeah. that was the belt that he grew up with. And so to this day, like to him, that's the greatest design there ever was. To me, it's like it's fucking madness. But... I do believe that there are a lot of fans that got into wrestling in probably the last decade or so, and they're going to be like, man, you know, the, the CM Punk was the greatest promo uh, ever, and these everyone in this period, they just broke all these records, and the women were the best ever, and blah, blah, blah. That's what people are going to remember that grew up in this period. Well, everyone does... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? They romanticize. They romanticize their childhood and when they became a fan. That happens for sure. But again, I, I'm perfectly fine with them relaying that knowledge to the fan base. But again, that should be the interviewer's job. Similarly, you know, when they do the backstage segments and, you know, the guy comes in and is like, hey, you know, I know last week in that Royal Rumble match, you know, I was number 32 and you were number 31 and I came in and did that. And because of that, I want to challenge you. It's like no one talks like that. Like, you're talking about something that happened between the two of you, but you're giving details about it that if he was there, he would know. But that's where if there was a mean gene that was interviewing these two people or came into the locker room, he could do that with the, well, hey, Miz, I know you were really upset that Edge came in and threw you out of the Royal Rumble. It's like, what, what are your thoughts? But when Edge has to walk in and go, well, hey, Miz, I know you were upset when I came down to the Royal Rumble and did this in front of the WB Universe. And it's it just it, it doesn't ring as true to me. And I, I, I wish 
they would find a different way to relay that information. And I think the mean gene is, is the guy. And like you say, the interview women they have, unfortunately, they they've been could gi- do the job. Yeah, they've been given the they've been given the gimmick of bad interviewer rather than just let them be the interview. And I, I think again, I'm guessing, speculating that, you know, the theory was that, you know, mean gene was a big personality and they don't want that personality to overshadow the talent. But I think a, if they can overshadow the talent, that's an indictment of your talent. But I think talent would rise to the occasion if they didn't have to relay all the stats and information themselves, and they could just do the one-minute promo of them being their version of, you know, the big Hulkster with his, you know, uh, hanging and banging on the Titanic. It's like, I remember that stupid promo. <laughs> it's like, it was a dumbass promo, but it got me excited for the match. What? If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.